Okay, we talked up there about what's the most limiting factor on year in and year out on growing soils, on growing crops in our soils? Water. Water, okay, and we've got to get water into the ground, right? You've heard the old timers say, Let, let's loosen the soil up, let's turn it over so that we can get the water into the soil. Let me show you what happens when we turn the soil over or loosen it up. We talked about structure, okay guys? And we talked about having good structure so water can move into and through the soil. And then we talked about water not being able to get into the soil when it has poor structure. Your farm has been tilled heavily over years and has poor structure. Yours have been using soil health management practices and has good porosities. You can see the, the gaps in the sponge there are for air and water exchange. You can see the gaps in here are for air and water exchange. <laughs> okay, let's make it rain here real quick. All right. Wait a minute, squeeze that brick and get the air and the water out of it. <laughs> give it a good, both hands, give it a good squeeze. There you go. Air and water's out of it. All right, hang on to that for a second. We're going to make it rain on your farm. You better hold that out a little bit. You're going to go swimming. <laughs> All right, now what I want you to do, we're gonna see how much air and water you have. I want you to squeeze this, your farm. See how much water comes out of it. All right, not much. Let's squeeze yours. All right, that's what's gonna happen. This is how much water you're gonna have for your crops in July and August. You've gotta get the water into the soil. We'll try it one more time. Squeeze harder your <laughs> Not a lot going in there, folks. All right, let's try this one. Same amount of rain, we're getting some runoff because it's raining really hard. <laughs> Again, the big difference is July and August, when you get that timely rain to make your crops germinate, let's see how much water you're going to have in July and August. Nothing. Not much. <laughs> what do you got, buddy? All right, that's the difference in making money and not making money farming. Okay, thank you guys very much. Okay, we've all heard the landowners say that a lot of times they like to till their soil or turn it over or loosen it up so that they can get the water in for their crops. Again, what we've got here is a demonstration. This soil has been turned over and loosened up so that they can get the water in for their crops. This soil is pretty much used under a soil health management system. Has good structure, it's formed like marbles. It's that 25% air and water space for our soils. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it rain. So I'd like to get two volunteers to help me make it rain on these soils. So, okay, so let's see what happens, guys. We're gonna make it rain. That's going all the way through. That's good, right? Again, just think that you would have five feet of volume here. The water wouldn't be collecting in this tray below it would be five feet of soil, so that water would be there for your crops in July and August in a timely fashion. Okay, let's say you got a little bit of slope to your ground. Where's this water going to go? Down that slope. It's going to go down the slope into the drain and contaminate our groundwater and drinking water. Okay, so again, the fallacy is that if you turn the soil over and till it up, that you can get more water into the soil. And hopefully this demonstration shows that you're doing the exact opposite. Okay, thank you guys very much. The next demonstration we would like to do, again, is to show you again how we're gonna get the water into the soil. We don't want it running off. So again, good structure, good porosity, good available water holding capacity. So what we're gonna do now is use our rainfall simulator. If you two guys could come up again, again, let's pretend you have the same farms. Again, Morris, I want you to have the heavily tilled, tilled farm, and Kelly, I'd like for you to have our soil health farm. All right, again, what this is, this is a traditional soil that has been disked, plowed, tilled, and is ready for production, or ready for planting. And what we have here is part of our soil health plots, which is using a living root 365 days a year. Again, we've got good porosity, good structure, Hopefully what's gonna happen, our water will move into the soil. You won't get a lot of runoff, but you'll get a lot of water in the bottom tray, which is our groundwater. On the tilled soil, what should happen, or what we think is gonna happen, you should have some runoff, you should have lots of sediment that's getting into our 
groundwater and our lakes and streams. So again, heavily tilled, low porosity, no structure. Soil health, living root, 365 days a year, good structure, good porosity. Just dump the water in the trays and let's see what happens. As you can see, we're starting to get some runoff here. Lots of sediment inside the runoff. The other one, we don't have any runoff and we're getting some through throughfro to our groundwater. And it's the same amount of rain. No structure, no porosity, heavily tilled. We are starting to get a little bit of runoff off of our soil health plot, but look at the difference between the runoff. It's very clear, no sediment involved. We've got to get the water into the soil so that it's available to our plants at the critical time and we're not washing our soil away. All right, thanks guys. Again, we talked about soil structure a little bit ago. Um, what we've got here. Our different management systems. You can see that this one's a little bit darker. This is 3% organic matter. This one's quite a bit paler. It has a half a percent organic matter. You can see that this one has holes in it and roots coming off of it from that 365 day a year root on the crops, okay? No roots, very compacted, no structure. So again, I want two people to come up and show us how we can soak these. You two guys come on up. So you've got 3% organic matter and you've got a half a percent organic matter. And we're gonna see what happens here. And hopefully what we're gonna see, hold on a second, we're gonna soak these, and hopefully yours will bubble a little bit because of that 25 air and water, that exchange, and I don't think yours will bubble much, and hopefully we'll see what happens when we put them in there. So dunk them in, let's see. I don't know if you can see the bubbles or not, this filling that air space. As you can see, the one with the half a percent organic matter is pretty much just falling apart. Again, as this falls apart, it seals over the surface of the land and everything washes off. Therefore, the water is not getting in for your crops. Uh, you can still see a little bit of bubbles going on as this one continues to disintegrate. Again, this is what's getting in our streams and our creeks and affecting our drinking and groundwater. Okay, so let's speed this up a little bit for time and we'll make these bounce a little bit. I bounce them the same amount. You see a few particles coming off that's actually pieces of structure that are falling apart because the water is not getting cloudy. This is just individual soil particles in the water, whereas this is just pieces of structure falling loose. Again, 3% organic matter, half a percent organic matter, more water at critical times for your crops, bad for our drinking water. Okay, what about it guys? You want this one? <laughs> Me too. <laughs>